Okay. Okay, that's it. All right. Yeah, yeah, we're back. Another week has flown by. Bye-bye. Oh, of course another week has flown by. Because time keeps on slipping, slipping, and slipping into the future. Oh, happy Festivus for the rest of us. Uh, hail Krampus. Merry Krampus Day, which is uh, coming up December uh, 5th, I believe. Ooh. December 5th. The day after December the, Ren the Renaissance Man Can Creates birthday. Wouldn't it be funny if he was born on Krampus Day? He kind of looks like Krampus, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Hi -oh. Oh, oh, yeah. Seven bells for the beginning of our show. You already know what our show is and who we are by the intro. Anyway, <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? Uh, the winds of November came late because it ain't November anymore. We had a, we had a, I would say we had a very mild November of uh, 2016. So far. And now we have the uh, the beginning of December. However, however, what the week coming up, there'll be a there'll be a change. Well, it's there get, will be a change. Ninety degrees. The other direction. It's gonna get real cold. Well, not real cold. You know, like colder. Zero. You colder. Yes. Colder than now. Yes. Oh boy. I'm going to have to get a bottle of uh, either uh, good rum or Irish whiskey or maybe I'll get some spice rum. Keep quiet over there. <coughs> Beelzebub is taking the form of, of a cat that decided to meow. You know, it, it, we didn't luck out enough having the freaking furnace stop at the beginning of the show, but now we got a cat meowing that's going to fuck, fuck up the professionalism of the show because old Beelzebub doesn't want the real hard-hitting truth to get out there. Keep quiet. But he... Open the door for him. Oh, for Christ's sake. No, wait. If, he's going out. If go this open isn't the door. fucking... Don't, don't say anything. Just open the freaking door. If this isn't fucking Beelzebub interfering with the professionalism of the show... Look, there. View. Why, why do I got a kowtow to a fucking... Because you just solved the problem of the cat. Oh. No, the, Jesus, I, well, man, I want to tell him off before I let him out. Forget about that. Just get him out of here. Oh, good. Until he meows yeah. to come back in. Whatever. Anyway, um, I'm trying to understand something, um, which which is is connected with the title of our new series. Uh, which uh, is not very complimentary of, of Americans nowadays, but the, then again, they don't deserve any compliments. Um, I believe that <coughs> if you read 2 Timothy in the Bible, I believe that we are uh, living in the end times. Uh, Ken, Ken Create told me he feels the, the end of days started uh, after the crucifixion of Christ, but, uh, but you know what? There is a. That. What about uh, you? Know, what about the part in the Bible that mentions that in the end of days, uh, information will rapidly advance, increase, increase. Your sons and daughters shall see visions at a etc. Rapid pace. Now look. Yes. Look at technology. Yes. Look at look at how far how fast computer technology, computer science, robotics is advancing more than you know they already have a, a, an android that uh, uh, can learn and think on its own by just mm. having a conversation with a human they already have that mm. Japan is very advanced on that uh, and the US but however but if Japan you, is a uh, Japan always is you know ahead of us in but if you go back into all like the science fiction movies and etc okay. there's always a problem with that because they lack a moral compass well they they feel that the components of the uh, Android or the or, or cyborg or whatever the hell you want to call it that the components of their brain the artificial intelligence has a capability of learning 
emotion and then eventually feeling it. But. But I don't know, that might be in theory. But. But there's a big problem. What happens when that automaton learns that it is superior to you? Well, what the, docu uh. what the documentaries are saying uh -huh. is that once robotics gets to that point, to that advanced point, where the robots, the androids, have the capability of, mm -hmm. of maintaining and building themselves, reproducing mm -hmm. themselves, because we already have robotics in manufacturing that have replaced uh, human employees, and they, they do it perfectly. They do the job perfectly. You know, they don't get tired, they mm -hmm. don't come in with a hangover, etc. You know. Don't take coffee breaks. Right. Oh, yeah. Republicans love that, right? Yeah. You don't even have to put a diaper on them, like they do yeah. in China. Yeah. An adult diaper. But anyway, once they, they, they have the capability of thinking for themselves, maintaining themselves, and manufacturing themselves, reproduction, yes, yes. then they're going to get together and they're going to go, you know, why do we even tolerate these humans? They're nothing but trouble. Throughout the history of, of, of since time began, they've been nothing but trouble. They're inferior to us. They're uh, they're illogical. This, so on and so forth. Star Trek One, V'ger. Yeah. The humans are a disease and must be eradicated. Yeah, they'll they'll treat us like we're we're tumors, mm -hmm. like we're uh, benign or malignant tumors, mm -hmm. uh, like we're Dunzel, Captain ah. Dunzel, of no useful purpose. Right. Once we become a Dunzel, then they'll... Until, until Beecher found out who created it, you know? The most... Son of a bitch. And he, now leave him, leave him. Leave, don't bother. Don't bother. You're going to stay. Quiet! Do not respond to him. No. He knows you're here. The L's above, man. Working through the cat. Go ahead. He's got some fucking pair of lungs on him, huh? You probably won't hear it. Yeah. Anyway, uh, now Jill Stein and um, Bernie Sanders, they they are both made me think a lot about their motives and what they're doing. Now, Bernie Sanders obsessively wants to reform and save the Democratic Party. <laughs> Excuse me, Bernie Sanders. Uh, obviously has no interest in a progressive independent or third party he he's on a mission like a superhero wearing spandex and a cape hey. to save the Democratic Party uh, Hillary supporters that worked for either Hillary's campaign or the DNC feel that Bernie Sanders is uh, <laughs> intruding uh, why, you know, he has no right to be, get involved and blah, 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 because they feel this one particular man uh, said, uh, that worked for Hillary, said that he hurt us. Hey, you, the DNC, hurt the grassroots revolution and Bernie Sanders. That's how it happened. Uh, it, you, by, um, whether it be by, uh, Hook or crook? Uh, hook or by crook, uh, 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 election rigging, uh, or whatever. Whatever. Uh, um, or the, the media, well, the media had to talk about Bernie Sanders because he, he was getting su such enormous people, amounts of people at his rally, so he had to become news. But, you know, they there's a blame game going on. You know, the Hillary people are... are taking turns blaming different individuals, different factors for her loss, but in, in reality <laughs> the DNC and the Clinton campaign did it to themselves uh, because um, all the allegations were uh, mostly true. Now, um, why Bernie Sanders is so obsessed with saving the Democratic Party and reforming it uh, it might be a uh, an uh, idealistic pipe dream. It, it might it, it might happen. It might not happen. We don't know. It, the Democrats are part of the corrupt 
two-party establishment. Whether Bernie Sanders can pull this off, along with his uh, cohorts there, you know, with Chuck Schumer and uh, all the other establishment Democrats. If anybody, if uh, anybody will save the Democratic Party, it will be Trump. Elizabeth Warren. Well, Trump, you see, what happened was everybody seems to be really looking up to uh, many people that uh, are computer literate and they, and they go online often uh, really revere organizations like Anonymous, uh, WikiLeaks with Julian Assange. Assange. Now, when you think about it, if Julian Assange of WikiLeaks and Anonymous would have came out with all this information in the spring and or summer of 2016, we might be uh, right now looking at Bernie Sanders in the White House because it might have uh, in the indictment, or, you know, if Comey would have done his job, Hillary Clinton would have stepped down or would have been forced down. Bernie Sanders would have slipped right in. But they came out with all this information late in the game, so therefore they helped Donald Trump get elected because Bernie Sanders was not relevant anymore in the election so they helped Donald Trump get elected by tearing apart Hillary Clinton. Well, what I mean That's a big is, mistake they made. What I mean is the people Donald Trump is hiring for his cabinet. Oh, we'll get to that. Oh, well, that's what will that's what will raise the Democrats right. for no, next we're, you know, we're, we're get voting. to that because the, right. his his picks Donald Trump's picks for his cabinet is even worse than him picking, uh, 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 what was his, Mike? His first name is Mike Pence? Mike Pence. Yeah. Mike Pence as his vice presidential uh, a running mate, a, 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 a zealot evangelical uh, uh, religious nut as his vice presidential running mate. Now, that's it. his cabinet's even worse, so, you know, his cabinet goes contrary to all of his campaign promises. Ah, yes. This is what puzzles me. Now, getting back to the other half it of... It shouldn't puzzle you. He's a businessman. Well, but, uh, well, well but he, uh, when he campaigned, he, he showed... He, he verbally uh, voiced his opinion of, uh, See, of caring so much about the uh, America's poor and middle class and... You know, I, I want to be a president for all the people. So, so when you pick very right-wing uh, individuals, Wall Street your, executives, like uh, Goldman Sachs, lo uh, lobbyists, right? Exactly. Well, not lobbyists. These are the people in charge. Clinton, Clinton hired them, and Barack Obama hired them. Barack Obama, another corporatist, another corporate whore. People. Yeah. People tend to forget, you know, it's it's just the opposite side of the same coin. Republican, Democrat, Republican, Democrat. So all these picks go for the cabinet go contrary to his campaign promises. Now right. Bernie Sanders says uh, him and the the Democratic minority is gonna gonna uh, has documented all of his campaign promises and they're gonna hold his feet to the fire. We will see. Now, switching to uh, Jill Stein, uh, now, now they talk about Jill Stein because she's very, very relevant in the news in her connection to, uh, in a way, in her connection to the Hillary Clinton uh, campaign, Hillary Clinton loss, rather. Before they, the, the, media didn't, the media didn't talk about Jill Stein. Recounts. Yeah, well, I'm getting to that. Right. Let me finish. Hillary joined the recounts, remember. So Jill Stein started them. Oh, God okay? Almighty. Where was I? Jill Stein is relevant in the news because of the connection to Hillary Clinton's loss. Jill Stein, why on earth would a, uh, a supposedly a true progressive representing the Green Party, not even the two-party system, the Green Party, why would she try to raise money to do this recount, uh, 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 which uh, uh, 
helps Hillary Clinton's campaign look good. If the recount shows that Hillary Clinton, uh, without without a doubt, uh, 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 won the popular vote by a landslide, it'll that. make Hillary look good. It's not going to make. It's not going to make. Uh, 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 it's not going to make the Green Party look good or Jill Stein look good. It's going to make Clinton look good. So why is she doing this? You're forgetting something very it's important. It's interesting. Clinton, Clinton already won the popular vote. They have established. You don't have that, to right? show yet. Two, two and a half million. But, but is she? Is she? Is Jill Stein? Is Jill Stein doing this for publicity so she can become relevant? Is she doing this like the conspiracy theorists say that she's paid to uh, to do this recount as a distraction away from PizzaGate and the and the an international pedophile ring that's going on? No, no, no. It, it's a big distraction away from Pizza Game. doing it to take away the electoral co uh, 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 college. If she can prove that there were irregularities in those three states, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, then uh, Trump will lose the electoral college. Bingo. Well, I thought Trump didn't care for the Electoral College also. No, he didn't, but that's how he won. He did not win the popular vote. So so it, it will it will uh, reinforce the elimination of the Electoral College. Perhaps. And hopefully... We've been bitching about that for decades. And don't forget, the Democrats have the superdelegates that also need to go bye-bye. Yeah, but that's in the primary. So the motives, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm reading articles that Jill Stein's motives are not as sincere as people may think. I, you know, it's there's nobody. There's nobody good in this capitalist system. I hate to tell you. I, there's nobody you can really trust in the system. And, and Americans, hey, they... Um, all, all kinds vote. <clears throat> People that are severely brain cell deficient vote. Semi-idiots vote. Intelligent people vote. And a lot of people don't bother to vote at all. For whatever reason. Uh, Americans will receive exactly the kind of government they deserve. I, I believe Grover, President Grover Cleveland said that. And... Uh, they asked for it. Americans asked for it. I mean, uh, they could have, uh, hey, Bernie Sanders, when he, he knew he wasn't going to win the nomination and he knew he was going to go back to being an independent and leave the DNC, he could have very easily took his uh, grassroots revolution over to the Green Party. And then all the progressives could have lived happily ever after and uh, he could have promoted, it, well, it would have been him and Jill Stein. On the ticket, okay, uh, and most likely this, that Baraka guy uh, um, could have been in the cabinet, you know. But anyway, that didn't happen. It didn't happen. So what, I, what I'm saying is, everybody has a price in Satan's world, in the material world, especially capitalism, the devil's economics. Now, what you were going to say? Let's get back to the cabinet. Because I know you you wanted to zero in on Donald Trump's cabinet. They they're all right wing, right. They're nuts. all the opposite of what he talked about in his in his campaign. Right. They are right. all the same, like Clinton and Barack Obama. Yeah. They are people, elites, etc., who will not do anything for you. So so pretty much a cookie cutter copy of of Paul Ryan's. Yeah. With that mentality, because he's a piece of shit. Yeah. Well, yeah. He wants to steal your social security, like like the money is an entitlement. It's not yeah. an entitlement. You paid into it. It's, uh, uh, unemployment, social security, it, it, it's paid for, and and it's not in the red. Right. I, I believe the truth is, it's very much in the surplus. Yes, but <laughs> it's not in the form of money. It's in the form of treasury bonds. The most successful uh, uh, investment in the world. 
well, today. Well, treasury bonds. Very low pay and interest, but you're talking yeah. about st safety, stability. Yeah. That's what they're in. They're because uh, the, the government uh, robbed the money to pay for other things. It took the money. I'm surprised the treasury... gave the uh, bonds in, in lieu of IOU. I'm, I'm surprised the bonds are worth anything at all, considering the fact that the U.S. dollar is, is like confetti, right? Well, the bonds are, you know, the bonds are so, something separate. They're not... Uh, now, Donald money. Trump supposedly wants to uh, go after the Fed, Federal Reserve, end it and go back to a gold-backed currency, sort of like what Muammar Gaddafi wanted to do. Well, forget about that. That doesn't work. What, gold backed? Yeah. How do you know? Well, because there's not enough gold in the world. That's why. Oh, you mean compared to the spending that the United States does? If, if the United States was on a, a gold standard, it could only print so much money. And, and no more. And no more. Oh, okay. And that's what the Republicans and then love about it. So they don't have to, uh, they, so they have an excuse not to uh, help the people. Yeah, At their all. excuse is they help corporations and the rich instead. Right. <laughs> Who outsource your American jobs, there is no trickle-down economics, and the people end up in the gutter. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I mean, I guess they have, I mean, do they have customers if, if Americans are flat broke? Corporate America? No, not at all. They seem to have forgotten that part of the equation. They don't think that very... you need customers for your business they, to succeed. They don't think very long term, do they? No, they do. No, they they do. also don't think long term in the fact that that the more money you put in the pocket of the average uh, uh, Joe six pack American citizen, mm. the better the economy does because now he has surplus cash to spend and put back into the economy. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, as you could see. This is a very grassroots a revolution, progressive talk show. We don't have an expensive studio like uh, the Young Turks, uh, Sank Yuker uh, or Iker, or whatever the fuck his name is. We don't have that. We're not entrepreneurs rolling in dough, but we are mere um, uh, messengers. That's it, humble messengers. This is what's left of the Bernie Sanders bird. You see this poor poor thing, this pathetic skeleton of a bird here, this is what's left of the Bernie bird because Bernie Sanders is the one that f flew the coop and the Bernie bird is with us now. Poor thing. In spirit. In yeah, spirit. Why? Because he's dead. Yeah, he was, he was thrown into a bag of shake and bake. His, much. his carcass was picked clean. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, by the circulating von Condor. As long as the oligarch pays off people, offers the bribe, and politicians are willing to take. Hold on. First the cat, and now this, and and politicians are are willing to take the bribe. I don't see any change except for what's um predicted in the end time uh, prophecy. Uh, I don't see any positive change. I don't see any positive change with the outcome of the 2016 election. So anyway, um, I don't have um, any Chisler's Hall of Shame per se. Uh, let me see. Did I get ripped off this past week? Uh. There's always, there's always a shenanigans going on. Oh, you know what? They're starting already. Those nauseating, sickening, fine jewelry commercials. Jared, K, hey. K Jewelers, you know. Uh, the other uh, one. Yeah, all of them with their, their sickening, nauseating, sappy commercials. The diamond is forever. The, di the diamond is, is crap. There's so many diamonds coming out of South Africa. It's all bullshit. It's all... <laughs> it's all snake oil...
carnival pitchman lies. It, it, it's it's bullshit. It'll make her love you more. Right, and 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 it it like it makes you it makes you part with your money for uh, unimportant reasons, you know. Because hey, you, you, might get you in bed tonight. Why should that get you? In, why should that get you laid? You mean uh, paying top dollar for a stone that's not really that's marked up so high by by the Jew retailers that's marks marked up so high that they are literally ripping you off and, and our system allows them to and that that should get you laid the young lady doesn't know all that what about well then she the young lady is an idiot piece of black and the young lady young lady is okay. stupid and naive and, and misinformed well, I bet I bet I bet how a lot of men get those young ladies into bed for being well you you stupid. could turn around and say the same thing about the uh, the crooks that run florists the, the rip off florists you could say the same thing about a box of uh, candy candy you could say the same thing about a uh, six or eight bucks for uh, whatever five or eight bucks for a hallmark card with, with crushed velvet on the outside it's all bullshit it's all bullshit retail to to uh, create this illusion in your mind to make you spend the money on on nonsense mm -hmm. and 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 the women they get all flustered the romance should not be about once in a big while holiday comes up and then you know they should be appreciated all year round mm -hmm. if they're worthy of it you know and uh, it's it's all about the relationship between the couple that's all it shouldn't be about a material item a material possession it shouldn't be about that uh, just like the very very rude question that you find on questionnaires uh, uh, with uh, online dating like what is your occupation uh, what is your income range mm. it's nobody's damn fucking business what your income is whether you're a man or a woman it's nobody's damn business what you your occupation is or your income it is not relevant to love but they rudely ask you yeah yeah, okay. yeah. all right let us let us uh, go oh boy. to the readings of our show oh boy Hold on. Lucky number seven. Uh, excuse me. Oh, we're doing rather early. Unless your clock is fucked up. No, that one's correct. That one's a little bit fast. Oh my god. That one's about five minutes fast. Oh, we're doing good on time. Please, please, am I right? Am I right? We're doing good on time, right? Yeah. Perhaps, perhaps, oh, perhaps, the record, that's our local newspaper. Yeah, yeah, a little too, a little too, uh, mild for my taste, but uh, that's what we have. Needs to do more fact-checking. Uh, the writer of the letter asserts that were, that there were riots following the presumptive electoral college victory of Donald Trump. While there were spontaneous protests in the wake of the win by the candidate who promoted division and resentment, there were no riots. The writer states that even though he opposed the presidency of Barack Obama, he accepted him as our duly elected leader. How magnanimous of him! In fact, in both 2008 and 2012, Obama won clear majorities in the popular vote and in the Electoral College. Yet despite that, Congressional Republicans and others in the right sought to undermine him from the start, with some, primarily Trump, even in questioning whether he was an American. Obama got overwhelming votes from people of color 
and, and ultra-liberals that wanted to make history. It's fitting then that in winning this year, Trump did not even capture the percentage of votes that Mitt Romney received as the losing candidate to Obama in 2012. Oh, really? While those who prefer order and blind obedience to authority over freedom may disagree with the aims and motivations of those exercising their constitutional right to protest, they ought not be allowed to invent their own facts in a mainstream newspaper to marginalize those with whom they disagree without being corrected. Well, then, then you would have had, if Trump didn't get elected, you would have had somebody who uh, would in, antagonize Vladimir Putin in, 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 to the point of World War III. So, you know, <laughs> it's really a, 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 the selection this year overall, aside from Bernie Sanders, who shocked us all, it's really poor. Correct. It's really, yeah, I mean, hey, look, even Jill Stein, uh, anytime I used to go to her live stream videos, where her rallies, they look like Woodstock. They, they, they look like a bunch of friggin' hipsters, man. Hipsters. That's a turnoff. That's not very presidential. So, Sanders was the only one that I liked. I just didn't think, I thought he was going to be in it for the long run, the long haul. I really didn't think he was going to just like quit after he lost the nomination. So, you know. Now, of course, he has a book out now. Anyway. And he bought a new house. Yeah, and, and a sports car. And a car. Yeah. So I guess he did okay. Well, he should, he should be living high on the hog uh, after 30 years uh, in Washington. Uh -huh. I mean, I'm, I'm sure he's not, uh, you know, scraping the bottom of the barrel to get by. I'm sure he's always uh, done well. 30 years of persona non grata. Nobody gave a damn. You know what? About what he said. To be honest he with you, I don't remember the media uh, ever really mentioning his name over all these That's years. That's correct. They didn't mention his name. He was like... He was like like a an ignored uh, uh, a person, like a kid in school that nobody pays attention to, and he, you know, sitting in the corner all by himself. You know, what I mean, right. he didn't get any FaceTime, but oh, of course, Donald Trump got tons of FaceTime 24/7 for free too. For free, yeah. Donald Trump. They said Donald Trump did not really need to travel. No, he didn't. Uh, like Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders did. No, because he didn't have that kind of a ground game. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't have the need really to, to, to travel nearly as much because he, the media was constantly covering him. That's right. They were against him, but they covered him because of his outrageousness. That's right. Every time that he had a rally, they were there. The crooked media. Because, because of what came out of his mouth, they covered him. If he wasn't. Donald Trump, we all know, the media would not have been following her, him around no. with cameras. No. I think that the citizens of New Jersey should thank Bill Brennan for doing what should have been done by the Bergen County Prosecutor. Examine whether Governor Chris Christley should be charged with official misconduct in the Bridgegate scheme. Christie could make the life of Judge Bonnie Mizdahl, who has to decide about appointing a special prosecutor, 
much easier by requesting to be investigated by the special prosecutor. After all, he says he's innocent. And he made the citizens of New Jersey pay about ten million dollars for a report that says he was out of the loop when people in his administration illegally closed lanes to the George Washington Bridge. Yeah, to spite the mayor of Fort Lee. If Christie is so innocent, he should volunteer to be investigated by the special prosecutor. President-elect Donald Trump will applaud his courage. Okay, you finished with that one? Yes, sir. Because I have to read something that I forgot to read. Aha! Uh -huh. Not much, not much, but you, I think you would find it very interesting. I would like to dedicate this show this week of Progressive Discussions to a young man by the name of um, Christopher Boson, capital B O E S E N. This young man, um, who was um, unfortunately paralyzed from the neck down um, in a severe automobile crash, was the first paralyzed victim to receive stem cells and I would like to announce that Christopher Boson is regaining mobility in his upper body where he is actually lifting weights in the gym. The stem cell, uh, um, whatever, however the doctor administered, administered it to his nervous system, his nerves, it worked. Nice. So Christopher Boson is the first patient, first paralyzed victim patient to receive stem cells, and it was a success. success. God bless you, Christopher Boson. Okay. Right. I just wanted now, to say that and dedicate the show to him. Now we have to apply that to uh, others. You know. Yeah, well, he has said problems. That's a big stepping stone. Yeah. You know. Now that we know that it works, in one instance, uh -huh. we will, uh, you know, hope that it works in others. Yeah, I mean, I mean, too bad. If if the research was uh, was not obstructed, who knows? Maybe uh, the late Christopher Reeves would have survived. If well, yeah, they, they, these things would have been done earlier. That's for sure. Yeah. Instead of the right, like what the Republicans, you know, with anything to do with stem cells, it's like a fetus, it's like an embryo, it's like a this. So they think you're playing God. So they have, uh, they have blocked avenues to research and etc. For how long? Well, their uh, uh, their idea of um, playing God, I guess, also includes what helping the poor, feeding the poor. No, no, it does not. Unfortunately, I must say. Well, I got news for them. The only time the Bible mentions uh, when life begins is when God gave the first breath to Adam. It has nothing. To, it's has nothing to do with a a fertilized human egg mm -hmm. or um, an embryo that breeds like a fish. And Adam did not have a navel because he was never dependent upon a uterus or a woman. Yeah, for his life. Well, he was okay. he was the first human created, but I'm just saying. That's correct. He was creator. There's no evidence that the fertilized egg is a human baby. It is no more a human baby than an acorn is an oak tree. It is a potential. An acorn is a potential oak tree. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it's just a nut. <laughs> that sometimes I feel like a nut. Sometimes I don't. That the Koreans grind uh, into a flour and make a dessert out of mm -hmm. the acorn. And this and the uh, fertilized human egg, the conception is uh, equally, has equal value. Mm -hmm. And so, anyway. In reference to the case about a special prosecutor and Governor Christie, 
This is a David and Goliath-like event being played out in the Bergen County Courthouse. It is a fight for justice. The question is, can a citizen bring charges against the governor and receive unbiased due process when the prosecutors in the case are state employees? David, in this case, is Bill Brennan. Judge Bonnie Mizdal will decide about naming a special prosecutor. It is imperative that she does so. I hope she has the fortitude to see clearly that a governor is not a king. Brennan, using the sworn testimony of Christie's staff, won a probable cause judgment against the governor. Brennan's case deserves a fair hearing. If justice really is blind, it should not be different for politicians. It seems that the governor had no problem throwing his staff under the bus. This was an act of cowardice that I believe even Donald Trump could see through. Criminal acts should snare all wrongdoers. And that includes uh, uh, corporate CEOs as oh. well as well as politicians. Oh. The rich. Is <laughs> 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 it? They they must have um, the oligarch um, CEOs. They must have a. Um, Immunity. I'm just assuming they have a very large security team protecting their asses. Well, I, yeah. I, because nobody, nobody ever like uh, drags them out of a limousine and, like, yeah. and works them over like really thoroughly. You never hear that. They all have those, and they need them. Yeah. Yeah, I'm assuming that that uh, you know. Mm-hmm. They always have a security detail. You know. Mm-hmm. Although the Supreme Court has declared flag burning to be a constitutionally protected form of speech, well, it's true. It's true. It's only a flag. It's only it's only material. Donald Trump said on Tuesday, on Twitter, that he still wants to make the practice illegal. Well, then he wants to do away with the the First Amendment rights. Then limit them even more. Yes. Mm -hmm. Flag burning is completely ridiculous, and I think you know that, and I think the vast majority of Americans well, would agree. So is uh, is um, many of the things Donald Trump said over the years re ridiculous? <laughs> Most of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, Most are more ridiculous and lies. I mean, being being a, a, acting like an asshole or saying stupid things is is also part of the First Amendment. So you know, it's like he wants to be. I guess he wants to be a dictator, a fascist uh, dictator. <laughs> yeah, well, a dictator doesn't have to check his facts, does he? He no. just says what he says, and that's it. Right, like imperial. And if you don't believe him, they throw you in a hoose Like like monarch, like the monarchs yeah. of the past. You know the. the the king said, uh, "You there's you cannot hunt in the king's forest and and shoot the king's deer, because the king said so." That's correct. His spokesman Jason Miller said on Tuesday, in a contentious interview with CNN, mm -hmm. when he was asked about Trump's tweet. But legal, host Chris Cuomo interjected. Flag burning should be legal, illegal, excuse me. Why? It's completely despicable, Miller continued. Right, and what about what the U.S. does internationally in other countries? Bombs the, the uh, 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 innocent women and children to smithereens? Okay, I mean, uh, that's more. That's much more despicable than the um, these teabaggers carrying on about the burning of a flag. It's not known what inspired Trump's condemnation of flag burning or whether he would call on Congress to pass a ban on it. Well, the right-wing nuts is what inspired him to say that. 
While the Supreme Court has upheld flag burning, Trump will have at least one appointment to that body and has a chance to alter the court's ideological direction. The American Civil Liberties Union and other free speech groups denounced Trump's statement, especially his suggestion that offenders could lose citizenship. White House Press Secretary Josh Ernest said, there was a bipartisan consensus that flag burning was offensive, but also that it's protected under the First Amendment. This is not the first thing the president-elect has said or tweeted that President Obama disagrees with. Well, to show you just how ridiculously stupid and imbecilic tea baggers are. There's one guy I had a, a short dispute with because I didn't feel the need to continue it. Actually, um, it was about the Standing Rock and, and the pipeline with Native American, uh, sacred Na Native American land, a tree, a break in a treaty. Mm -hmm. He says, uh, this guy says, Oh, Native Americans, were, don't believe the, uh, the, the liberal uh, nonsense. Native Americans were not the first here in the United States. I says, well, they found petroglyphs in the United States that uh, dates farther back, oh, over 10,000 years old. So, wise ass, I says, uh, you tell me who was here. Who was here? Who was here? Who was here? Who did he say was here? He, he didn't answer me. Well, well. Who was here before for before uh, Native Amer Native Americans? Who who? What stupid fucking people? It certainly wasn't the Pilgrims because they came here in 1620. What stupid asses? I mean, the Hopi Indians, thousands of years. It's a, uh, some of the some of the um, the ruins or artifacts were, were old, even older than ancient Egypt. And this guy says Native Americans were not the first here. They, 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 this is the kind of mentality you have. They, they don't know a damn thing about the Bible. They these evangelicals. They, they never have to back up with facts. They, they just spout things out. Uh, uh, racism, the bigotry, the uh, not knowing, really knowing the Bible. They're, they're cultists. They're stupid. Ge generally, all around, really stupid. To the point of uh, 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 you know uh, no 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 you can't you can't rehabilitate them they're so stupid uh, they're incorrigible they're incorrigible and there you go. not even worth your time a day people like this and yeah. these these are the people uh, out there in uh, in in, in uh, these southern and western states of mainstream America La La Land, yeah. that that showed up at the Trump rallies you yeah. know so if you're not if you're not um, a brain dead uh, redneck like them, they don't like you. Mm -hmm. You burn the flag. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what they're trying to prove by uh, getting all pissed off uh, because you know the people out there, them dar people from down to yonder, they down they yonder. do get upset over this flag burning. But they don't seem to know what the United States is doing internationally. Well, yeah, that's part. Of, that's that's the big big part of it. But the point is that when they talk about First Amendment rights, they're talking about First Amendment rights for them and not you. And that's how you have to read it. Oh, it's like a like like, like a one way street. It's that's correct. Pure selfishness. Yeah. Correct. Right. Yes. Absolutely. Like like government spending is fine for what they want to spend your tax, your tax dollars on. Mostly the military. Yeah, our military is never strong enough to a Republican. Exactly. So... They, uh, can, they can downgrade the United States in those terms and then none of their people get pissed off. But if somebody uh, uh, else, a Democrat or whatever, uh, in some way uh, says the United States needs to do this, that, the other thing to improve itself. Oh, they're all over them. 
Hey, they're I said, all over them. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's okay. In their eyes, it's okay to invade and occupy other countries that have oil and steal their oil. But when those countries rebel and uh, 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 start a, a guerrilla warfare against the United, United States occupation, oh, they're insurgents. They're no good. And it's okay to have 800 bases around the world. They're insurgent. Hey, 800 bases is a lot of bases. Yeah. That, that, that's a lot of tax dollars. That's a lot of tax dollars being spent out of the United States. That's an, That sounds like an occupation to me. Of course it's an occupation. Of other countries. And Bill I mean, Morrill, what happened at the World War II? And Bill, we, Morrill, we, we, Bill Morrill tells me, oh, we need all those bases. Uh, yeah, we need them all. To, right. to uh, maintain the stability in we, the world. We, because we got to have the Marines and the, the, the military and everything rape uh, Japanese uh, girls and this, that, and the other thing over there in their land. Yeah, yeah, Japanese. yeah. Japanese. Oh, they did that in World War II? No, they do it now. Japanese? Wh why? American bases. The Americans from the bases. Why are you bringing up the Japanese? Not because even... we have bases in Japan. We have bases in Germany. They haven't. They haven't tossed. Uh, the, these countries haven't said vamoose yet. No way, Jose. No, because first they... of all, after <laughs> World War II, we did not wish to allow Germany and Japan to ever rearm again. But we did allow them today to rearm. But our bases are there. Yeah. We are the NATO protectors but these, but of the, the world. But these, uh, yeah, you you know, you would you would figure the countries of the NATO and the UN would all pitch in. You know, uh, uh, you wouldn't think they would uh, sucker the mm. uh, U.S. taxpayer into footing the the bill. Footing the bills, yes. For all this. Yeah. Doesn't sound fair. Well, if, if if the people, all the people, the countries, especially the the uh, the uh, China and Russia and yeah. the United States, the the Security Council uh, would let the United Nations do what it was chartered to do, they would be the policemen of the world, the 180 countries or whatever. Not the Security Council, because the Security, right. Security Council can stop anything that the United Nations wants to do. The General Assembly. There's only like a nine p nine countries on the Security Council, and they have the uh, ability to say no or yes. Okay. Uh, the, I think the the United Nations should be should move out of New York. They should go somewhere like Switzerland or something, and uh, and. Uh, they should kick the United States out of the United Nations. Well, as far as I know, and I'm not sure about it, but the United States hasn't paid the dues yet. Well, it doesn't surprise me. And this is still from uh, George W. Bush or whatever. Oh, so, oh, yeah. it almost sounds like Donald Trump stiffing people for money. Yeah, well, that's <laughs> true too. I saved this banner that I, you probably saw on the show. Of it. it says the United States is nothing but a one a giant oil company with a military. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's what our military is has uh, has been for, etc. So if you you, you look at the uh, so the South American countries, uh, banana producers and etc. Who do you think protected uh, Dole and Chiquita and all of these uh, places of business, which are ours? Who do you think protects them? U.S. United States military. That's correct. That's what it's all about. But the point of it is, if you remember years ago, you used to see the United Nations white jeeps and trucks and etc. with the big blue UN letters on it. They used to go into places to peace keep, to keep the peace, etc. You don't see that anymore. Oh, like the Peace Corps? Yeah. I mean that's their yeah, that's what their job was the United Nations. Well, but but now they supposed look, to be united but, in the best for all of them. But now they look like fascist stormtroopers. Well, the right. United States does that now. That's yeah. the point. Yeah, like the like the hired uh, goon boy thugs up there in uh, North Dakota, the Flat Rock. You know, uh, uh, they're up against protesters, unarmed protesters. Now you know, Jane 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 Fonda is up there now, and they. They oh, got, yeah, she's up there. They got they got the Kevlar. They, you know they got full. 
Yeah, well, some bad weather's coming up there. Full riot right gear, and uh, and they're not moving. They said. Protest, and then I hear I hear the uh, the veterans that went up there. They got roughed up by the goon boys. They got. Yeah, there's beat. more coming, I believe. This all this pro unarmed protesting is not the answer up against fascist stormtroopers like that. Well, it's not the answer against business, and that's what the pipeline is. See, that's the point. You can't. The, the, you can't the make little nice, guy, nice with evil. Uh, that's what I'm trying to say. The little guy cannot get anywhere with business, well, which has the dollars. Well, not not if you're gonna not if you're only gonna protest. Exactly. No, you have to have a. You have to do things. Uh, you gotta play hardball, if you know what I mean. But as hard, I always say, you gotta play hardball against against the the, 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 the little guy must protest. The big guy takes his envelope and with, with wads of dollars and goes to see his senator or his congressman, and that's how stuff gets done. And the America. idiots uh, re-elect the incumbents. Exactly. That's why. Nothing changed. That's why the title of the show severely bashes Americans because the incumbents, the incumbents always continue to get reelected and the incum incumbents just happen to be right wing and these fucking people in southern and western states with their fucking counterfeit Christian phony baloney cults cultists evangelical cults Bible in one hand and a gun in the other keep on voting and reelecting the right-wing incumbents that tell them exactly what they want to hear. Meanwhile, these people are living in, in shacks. With dirt floors. With dirt floors, like that, what is it, Wolf County, Kentucky? Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. It makes no, it's bizarro world. Yeah, that's good. Cool. You type omega fatty acids into the search window on Google, you get at least 15 million responses. Very important uh, essential fatty acids, especially omega-3s. No wonder it's so hard to figure out why. It's crucial. Some articles tout the amazing health benefits of omega-6s, and others warn against consuming plant oils. Well, there's omega-6, omega-3, and omega-9. Such as sunflower, corn oil, Soy oils that are loaded with omega-6. Yeah, but uh, GMO, GMO corn. It depends, and it depends if it's cold pressed, expeller cold pressed. And although omega-3s are superheroes when it comes to tamping down inflammation and associated pain, heart disease, and cognitive problems, you hear warnings about taking fish oil supplements that are rich in omega-3 because... And what are those warnings that I don't believe, I think are lies? Because of possible contaminants. Well, that's how they scare you into not taking omega-3s. And, go, and going on uh, fucking uh, statin drugs. And what about those other old odd omegas like 5 and 7 and 9? Yeah. Well, we're here to help you make the best choices. Oleic acid. Omega-9 is found in olive oil. I think it's oleic, oleic acid. Omega fatty acids are essential for your health. And you can get them from the food you eat or from supplements. Some, such as certain omega-6s, can promote inflammation. Well, you always want the omega-3 to be higher, much higher than the 6. We get enough 6 in our diet anyway. Which is important in the right doses to help your body heal from injuries. Others, the omega-3s and 5s and 7s and 9s, fight to keep inflammation in check. Early Homo sapiens diet balanced equal amounts of omega-6s and 3s and the body got the best benefits. 
Fast forward to today's processed, packaged, plant oil crazy world where omega-6 rich corn, soy and cottonseed oils are found in the most margarines and shortening, mayonnaise, salad dressings, frozen foods, imitation dairy and meat products and commercially baked goods. In fact, 55% of the oil Americans consume is soy. Those oils have tipped the scales so that most Americans eat 14 to 25 times more omega-6 acids than omega-3. You gotta be wary if the soybean is uh, GMO, genetically modified soy, yep. just like the corn. Now, now vegetarian omega-3 is called alpha linoleic acid. Alpha linoleic acid. Like uh, chia seeds, flax seeds, um, um, hemp seed, uh, perilla seed. All right, continue. And new research indicates that that's tipped the scales toward obesity and bad for you inflammation. Oh, walnuts. Vegetarian omega-3. Let us not forget walnuts. A study in the journal Obesity reveals that when you eat foods containing omega-3s, they signal your body to burn fat. But taking it in omega-6s, particularly from vegetable oils, sends out fat storing signals. The researchers also say that too many omega-6s in relationship to the amount of odd omegas in your diet increases white fat cells and reduces brown fat cells. Brown cell cells are the, those are the good fat cells. Which help regulate weight raises inflammation and triglycerides and shortens the telomeres. It's almost like uh, having an extra organ in your body. It has, it has, it has a biological functioning, the, the brown fat cells. Plus, the omega-6s promote insulin resistance, increased waist circumference, and raise your risk for diabetes. Now, uh, sunflower oil and, and ghee, which is made from butter, from grass-fed cows, of course, organic grass-fed cows, has conjugated linoleic acid, which is very good for body fat reduction. Adding more odd omegas, including omega-3, to your diet uh, reduces fat and inflammation. When we say odd, we mean the, five, the, six, and uh, yeah, five, the, the, sevens, and, and nine. Yeah, the, the fatty acids that Three. are not are not plentiful. Yeah. Not that they are strange. They're not plentiful. Plentiful like uh, uh, omega six, which is uh, GLA, gamma linoleic acid. The omega threes lower triglycerides and oxidation and increases protein synthesis. Bottom line, get omega-6s from food sources that let them do their good work. Supporting brain function, bone and reproductive health. Raise your volume, please. Regulating metabolism and making hormones. Walnuts! With 11,141 milligrams in one quarter cup, Dry roasted peanuts have 5,727 milligrams. Yeah, well, you got to roast your uh, peanuts are legumes, so you, they have to be cooked. Yeah. Pumpkin. Ah, very good for men. Pumpkin seed oil. And squash seeds have 1,401 milligrams. Now, now, recently I'm reading articles about the medicinal value of papaya seeds. Foods rich in omega-3s include flax seeds, walnuts, wild salmon, veggies that also deliver basil, wheat germ, 
turn up screen. Green. Greens. Other good sources are cauliflower. I love cauliflower. Arugula. Sweet green peppers and spinach. I got two giant bags of, of wild Alaskan salmon fillet uh, at all these yesterday. The World Health Organization recommends a daily EPA and DHA intake of 300 to 500 milligrams. ALA intake of 800 to 1100 milligrams. We suggest taking a 900 milligrams of DHA, Alga Omega 3, you dodge contamination by getting DHA from where the fish do, from algae. D DHA is literally the brain food in fish. Or from fish oil that meets the pharmacopoeia USP standard. This is why I always recommend to senior citizens to take a product called Calamarine. It has, uh, each soft gel has 500 uh, milligrams of DHA. It's predominantly DHA, DHA is much higher than EPA. It's from, of course, the squid. Um, there, you know, there's a big problem with uh, seniors and others in relationship to supplements. A lot of them do not understand that you don't take your supplements once a day. Now they're uh, they um, they now I know seniors that spend a lot of their money on various supplements. They're out there. I've seen them in the vitamin shop with a basket loaded with bottles. I mean seniors, old, you know. And then there are those that bitch and moan about swallowing pills, but they'll think nothing of swallowing their prescription drugs. <laughs> of that's, course not. That's not too much pills. No, no, no. My doctor, hey, hey, let me tell you something. My doctor told me to take Centrum Silver because look, I, I, I'm, I'm, I got silver, I got gray hair, I, you know, or, 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 or uh, whatever. No, there's, there's no such thing as a one a day. The only thing that comes close to a good one a day that I've seen is uh, what I take from Nature's Way. It's called Alive. Uh, they have Alive for Women, Alive for Men, and then they have uh, Women fi Over 50 and Men Over 50. And it's a phytonutrient blend with the multivitamin. Boy. But you got to take the basic nutritional formula in addition to the uh, multivitamin. Yes, if you're eating three meals a day, you better take your supplements. Not the same ones. You may take uh, different ones at breakfast, but different, different ones at lunch and different ones at dinner. Well, I told but my, you should take them with your meals. Well, I told my mother, you got an upset stomach, man, because you're taking your vitamins on an empty stomach. You gotta, you gotta eat your you got to wait until you complete your first meal of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to have, you got to be done eating. Yeah. Whether it be brunch, breakfast, whatever the fuck it is, a lunch, you, first you complete your meal, you fill your stomach up with food, then you take your supplements. The supplements work with food. Because you need that optimal hydrochloric acid, you know, the well, digestive uh, for, yeah, uh, enzymes. Time, yeah, yeah. Digestive enzymes, absolutely, absolutely. very important. Absolutely. Omega-3 and 6 aren't the only omegas. These others come along for the ride when you get the right balance of 3s and 6s. Well, that's why I, I use uh, Himalayan pink salt, because you get there's 84 trace minerals yeah. in the Himalayan pink salt. So you have the, the, the primary macro minerals calcium, magnesium, potassium, manganese, etc., etc. And then you have all these trace mm -hmm. minerals that they're not sure what, what they do, but as time goes by, they're discovering them. Mm -hmm. 
and they work synergistically. Ah, there's the word. Synergy. There's the word. For, to achieve synergistic nutrition, to achieve homeostasis. Yeah. Which is the ideal uh, situation your body should be in. Omega-5, the best source is pomegranates. There you go. And it may help prevent cancer. Oh, pomegranate is, is an ancient biblical uh, fruit from uh, Mesopotamia area, I believe. Omega-7. Palmitoleic acid seems to be even more powerful than omega-3. Really? Although there haven't been head-to-head -head studies. Where is, it, where is that from? It decreases inflammation, triglycerides, and LDL levels. Oh, really? Improves HDL levels, oh. glucose uptake, oh. insulin activity, sensitivity, and fatty liver. Sources include macadamia nuts, anchovies, and olive oil. Oh, really? Omega-7 is, is uh, richly supplied by olive oil. Well, that, that would be the easiest... Uh, for people to get. It would, it would be like uh, extra virgin olive oil or any olive oil. Mm. Well, extra virgin would be better. Yeah, and uh, the people who like anchovies, they can get it right there? Well, I mean... Macadamias, that's a little it, too expensive, you it, know? Well, anchovies wow. are very salty. I, I, can't see the, I can't see the average person eating a can of anchovies every day. <laughs> They're very salty. And so I would say the most practical would be uh, extra virgin olive oil. Cold pressed, of course. Omega-9 uh, is also in macadamia nuts, in almonds, and olive oil. So almonds are expensive. It's oleic acid. Oleic acid. Canola and mustard seed. Erucic acid. Uh, canola. And peanut oil. Gotta be careful. Arachidonic. Arachidonic acid. Canola, as far as I uh, have heard lately, is a GMO. Yeah, even the Canadian? Even the Canadian. It started in Canadian. That's where the, the, the canola oil is Yeah, the, the canola, I would, I would avoid canola oil for that reason. GMO, but uh, canola, the canola seed is also called the, uh, the rape seed. Rape seed, that's good. All right. It helps control blood pressure, prevent diabetes, and protects you from various cancers. Well, I am very glad you came across that article because it's very important. Uh, uh, I just want to bring up that the late, great Dr. Robert C. Atkins used to say when he was alive that the number one deficiency in the United States is essential fatty acids. You know, uh, uh, unfortunately, a, a fatty, fatty asses are, there's an epidemic of those in the United States. <laughs> <laughs> Get it? And time for one more here, and this is a change of pace. Tomato paste. Tomato paste. Dear Abby. Yeah? I recently started seeing a self-made entrepreneur. That's, well, that's, that's what they claim to be. He's intelligent. Yeah. And basically the most amazing man I have ever been with. Yeah, she's, uh, she likes his money. She likes his income. Yeah. Because of his position and stature, oh. many beautiful and sophisticated women throw themselves at him. It shows you how many women are whores. Uh, dating a man for his, for his moolah. A friend of mine the hua, Tony. She's a hua. told me that in months that I have known him, he has had sex with at least five other women. Well, if he has that much money, maybe it's 500 other women. Several on the first date. Oh, yes. Yahua, Yahua. I'm not angry about it since we never formally agreed to be exclusive. But I'm in love with him. Well, is she going to give up the brush all or what? And I want him all to myself. Well, I, 
I think there's going to be a problem there if he has so many of these groupies. When I confronted him, he said that because he never had success with women previously, before the money, prone, <laughs> he is prone to seduction. Isn't that what Mr. Trump said? Well, Trump, Trump on the bus. Trump always had mega box. I mean, and he always. And that's why he gets away with grabbing the Gucci. Yeah, that's right. Because he's a rich, he was a rich kid. Well, that's what this guy is saying. Like, and then he's got his son with the same hairdo, the same hairstyle, Baron. Baron. Baron Von Trump. He said they didn't mean anything to him and that he wants to be with me. There were flings, yeah. I have dropped the matter for now, but I'm still concerned. I have tried to step up my game in the bedroom. Well, he better realize she's a gold digger too, because that's the first thing out of her mouth was he's an entrepreneur. His stature is, you know. And I am willing to do anything to stop him from looking elsewhere. Of course she is willing, of course. How do I make him give up his harem? Uh, 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 does she, uh, does she look as good as the other gold diggers? Does she, uh, is she a savage? Is she a savage? Dear Abby's in, answer. In the bedroom. I wish you had more clearly defined what prone to seduction means. Was <laughs> he saying that because years ago he had little success with women, he is enjoying the attention? It means he drops his drawers uh, uh, quicker. While you may be willing to do anything to have him all to yourself, if this man craves variety and is trying to make up for lost time, there's nothing you can do to dissuade him. Why, why doesn't Abby tell the truth that they're all gold digging whores? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah well, we I don't mean, know, man. We don't know, okay? Well, I know. He, he's know. an entrepreneur now, and he's successful. He's an entrepreneur. Well, well, and look, you don't have to flaunt your money. He probably flaunts it. Well, if you, I mean, if you were, if you got, they obviously know it. Listen, if you got bucks and you're wearing a a modest, humble Timex watch, or, that's if they still make them. Um, you know, instead of a Rolex watch, I used to love them. Time mixes. You know what? I use I. You it know, takes a licking and it keeps on ticking. Some of the some of the Timex. Uh, I know we're digressing, but some of the some of the old cheap Timex uh, um, uh, dress watches were quite good looking. You, you don't have to have the five hundred dollar Citizen or a, or a Seiko or a Rolex. Thousand dollars Rolexes. Yeah. yeah, the Rolex to to have a. To be honest watch. with you, the younger generation watches are out because everybody gets their time from the smartphone. Nobody yeah. really, only older generation people wear wrist watches. Unfortunately, I have some good watches. I have a Bulova, a Seiko, and a Citizen, but it's mm -hmm. all locked up. I don't wear them because. Well, the batteries went dead, number one. Oh, <laughs> I, I hate that. I don't wear them because, because nobody wears them. Yeah. The young people don't wear them. You know what I mean? Uh, Especially battery ones. No, nah, they just don't wear watches. They're out because everything's on. Everything is on that freaking smartphone. Nowadays. I like a po pocket watch with a fob. With the chain? Yeah, like the engineers, engineer watch. Oh, didn't. Uh, on, run, run, yeah, on, the train on the Twilight on Zone episode yeah, where, yeah, yeah. where Robbie the Robot replaced the CEO of the company. He was walking around swinging a pocket watch. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the engineers, that's right. And, and they had the freaking chain. Oh, you can see the chain hooked up. Well, I, I saw the Twilight Zone one the other day with the pig faces. Oh, the, the girl was beautiful, and they wanted to change her face into a pig face. She was ugly. They called she her ugly. She was ugly. Yes. Oh, that's like Marilyn on the monster. On the monster, she was the ugly duckling. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And 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 she thought she chased all the boyfriends exactly. away, but yeah. really was was Hoyman that chased all the boyfriends away. Anyway, we're gonna take a lunch break.
and of course you'll see promo for the show and Both shows and don't forget if you want to read any of our banners or anything just simply hit the pause button and then read it and then you know resume and we'll see after the show da -da 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 -da. Greetings. This is James P. Madonna of Mega Life 21 Hard Hitting Podcasts, Holistic Health Talk, and Progressive Discussions. I want to talk about the very foundation of our entire organization, the newsletter that was founded by my co host and mentor, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisman, in 1977. And that newsletter is called Censored. Newsletter Censored is truth and news fighting censorship and conservative propaganda. We believe we are living in the end times and you need Newsletter Censored. Newsletter Censored pr provides the kind of truth that most people are afraid to hear. Can you handle it? Newsletter Censored is for the independent, critical, free thinker with an open mind. Besides the reading of Censored, Newsletter Censored also has The God Project and How to Defeat a Conservative. There is nothing in the mainstream media or the press like Newsletter Censored. So simply go to www.newslettercensored.com and with your gift to support this work, get your free annual subscription to the newsletter that started it all in 1977, Newsletter Censored. You need Newsletter Censored. That's www.newslettercensored.com. Okay, we're back. We're back from lunch. What do you want from me, huh? We're back. What do you think? Are we back? We're back, Jack. Take that. Oh. Oh. I noticed I shaved for the show very close against the grain, but I noticed that um, that uh, seems to be uh, in style now for uh, many young people not to shave. They put the growing beards. Grunge look. Grunge or just just beards. You know. Grunge, like they're on hiatus. Yeah, the celebrities. Well, grunge would, be, grunge would be like when Don Johnson on Miami Vice used to not shave. You know, I mean, that would be good. I mean, I mean like, a, like a full... If they have the, uh, well, the genetics full, to have a grunge. full beard, but a lot of them just have beards. But, you know, they're... Uh, many of them, they trim them. But they're, you know, like you said, well, scru the scruffy look. Um, oh, I forgot to tell you... Um, the supermarket Aldi's in the uh, section where they have appliances. Uh, they have uh, this year. They have a uh, for, for fifteen dollars. They have a uh, Remington uh, all-in-one uh, trimming device that uh, has a foil. It, it, it's, an, it's, an, it's an electric razor, but it also has combs that you attach. I already got beaten on one of those. 
This is made by Remington. It has a nose hair trimmer. Paid 40 bucks for the damn thing. 40? It's worthless. No, well this is a... Finishing this, touch. This is a... Talk about Chisler's Hall of Fame. Shame. Shame. <laughs> Not fame. It's called Finishing Touch? Finishing Touch, yeah. Piece of shit, right? Piece of crap. All right, well, so let's induct the company that makes finishing touch, what is it called, the trimmer? You plug it in, or do you, or do you, it's, it's, uh, you charge it. Charge it. Yeah, the, this one by Remington is, is chargeable. Yeah. Chisel's all the shape. All right. Yeah. Let's commence. Not unlike a viper that bites its own tail, Washington Post columnist E.J. Dion displays judgment poisoned by his own venom. While a frequent advocate for tolerance of those at odds with America, Dion reveals precious little tolerance for those not sharing his views. Sounds familiar nowadays. His petulant Screed quickly calls out in his mind the offending misfits who did not pull the lever for his sainted Hillary Clinton joining Vladimir Putin and corrupt FBI agents are a legion of slap-jawed racist, misogynist, xenophobic white males. Interestingly, Dion falls strangely silent when it came to addressing the millions of women and members of minority groups who did not sip his Clinton Kool-Aid. In Dion's view, are they somehow less deplorable than white males? If Dion truly wants to find the source of Clinton's failure, he might look inward. He could start by reading his own column with an appreciation for the off-putting condensation. Oh, that's the douchebag that wrote an article blaming, blaming Bernie Sanders for ruining, uh, for, for being, uh, responsible for uh, Clinton losing or being partially responsible? Well, uh, Mr. Sanders was way out of the race at the time when she was losing. Yeah, what, what is this guy? Why Why is he so devoted to Hillary Clinton? He must be a, a corporatist also. Uh, you should look at his uh, column for appreciation for putting condensation Condescension, condescension, intolerance, and intellectual dishonesty that infused and infused Clinton's campaign. I don't know what that man. I don't know what any Clinton supporter really. Um, aside from the fact that they're. They're terrified of, of the Donald Trump uh, being in the White House. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I don't understand why anybody would be that uh, infatuated or loyal to the two-party system in general. Period. I just don't see it. I don't see the value in it, or the logic in it. In the 19 months of her campaigning, rarely, if ever, heard Clinton quote scripture <laughs> until her concession speech last Wednesday. An overwhelming majority of Americans possess a quiet and deep connection to their faith, whatever it may be. In failing to display an acknowledgement to their spirituality, she missed the opportunity to reveal a greater sense of her humanity. Humility. 
and remorse for trespasses, real or imagined, that the Cracker Barrel constituency of this country certainly perceived and acted upon. She may not have won them over, but a great many Americans believe themselves to be amazingly forgiving, and certainly would have tried their best to at least meet her halfway. Unfortunately, she never sought out that path. Maybe from lack of understanding and vision, or poor advice. Today, any candidate seeking to hold elected office in this great nation needs to work to clear away the gossamer webs of partisanship and stalemate and vitriol. They must commit to a true attempt at understanding and a connection upon all levels, including that of faith with all people before embarking upon their quest. Those who wish to postpone the task due to political efficiencies until after they are elected miss the point. They waste true and fleeting opportunities, are sorely lacking in sincerity, and simply add mortar and brick to the wall of divisiveness. Uh. Uh, divisiveness and this and that and wow 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 I just want to see results that affect my standard of living and uh. the standard of living of uh, mainstream America uh. you know the uh, the improvement of the basics needed uh. for happiness <laughs> happiness I'm sorry happiness you know, the basic, uh, 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 a safe place to live, which, you know, adequate shelter, clothing, and good, uh, healthy food, uh, the, uh, respectful uh, retirement with dignity, mm -hmm. uh, health care, very important. Uh, we need that uh, single-payer uh, health care, universal health care, uh, education for all, you know, the basic stuff. The job. All this <laughs> obsession with the... the, the divisiveness and racism and blah, blah, blah. I mean I don't I don't see any racism really or or, or hatred in Donald Trump I, I don't get that vibe from him Donald Trump is Donald Trump he's a character he's a he's a showman he's an egomaniac but I don't get any Hatred from him. Now the people that show up at his, sh at, showed up at his rallies. That that's a different story. Oh yeah, they they just they blame everything on people of color for their all their problems. Mm -hmm. You know, and gays of course. They blame them so anyway. This has nothing to do specifically with the outcome of the presidential election, but campaign and voting reforms are needed true and the sooner the better very true we need to shorten significantly the duration of the political campaign the British and Canadian campaign uh, durations are much shorter we need the abolition of early voting with the exception of legitimate absentee voting yeah true well, you know, I mean, I mean, sufficient de uh, televised debates really should be enough. I mean, for these for these people to constantly travel to every fucking major city in the United States and every state and do rally after rally after rally after rally. I mean, you you could reach more Americans through sufficient debates than to have them get on and off a plane a million times. Thousands of voters cast their ballots prior to election day. Televised debates, yeah. And could sway the outcome of an election. Many claim early voting is needed to alleviate crowding and unnecessary delays on election days. But I find these to be specious arguments. Really? 
Did he see any of those lines? <laughs> what about uh, possibly tampered voting machines uh, coming from uh, George Soros? If true, then we should lengthen the hours of voting. Absolutely. 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 Like, not awesome. like they screwed Bernie Sanders in the primary in Arizona, closing down the polls. Also, we need to standardize voting machines. Absolutely true. The most sophisticated country in the world should have one type of system for all 50 states. 100% accurate system. Also, the Electoral College needs to be abolished. Absolutely. Elections should be based on the popular vote. Right. And I'm not just talking about this recent one. All of them. Boy. Additionally, yeah. television coverage should start when the last voting hour is over in the country. How could a person, just like a professional sports team or even a thoroughbred racehorse, how could you win, how could you get more points than your opponent <laughs> and lose to your opponent? Like Bernie Sanders did with the, with the primaries in in uh, one of those states out west, yeah. he got he got he less. He won the state and lost the uh, right, right. The he won he won the state but lost because he got Hillary less got delegates. more yeah. more more delegates from it. Yeah. Is it possible that Western state voters cast their ballots based on what they see and hear on the major networks? You gotta be a fucking idiot to to rely on the major uh, media, major network media. It's absurd seeing voting projections and uh, projections and analyze and anal analyses <laughs> at nine or ten p.m. when voters out west still have not voted. Let's face it, our present system of campaigning and voting is absurd. Well, MSNBC loves to project the winner way ahead of time, don't they? Yeah. Or probably maybe even CNN, right? So does Fox News. They project the winner. They did that uh, back uh, with G.W. Bush. Now, doesn't that isn't that a sneaky form of voter suppression? Because if you're projecting the winner early, that makes many people give up and not go to the polls. Especially if there's going to be lines. Okay. All right. Yeah. And and there has to be a more efficient system of voting, where lines should not be. A factor. Not only lines. It should be a holiday, a day off. Yes, national holiday. Day off. Where everybody has the day off on the primary election day. Shut up. Let him in. You know, pain in the fucking even ass. If, even if it's just a weekend, you know, like a Saturday or he, something. He's a, he, 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 but, uh, he I'm surprised he's male cat, not female the way he nags. Get the fuck in here. What a pain in the fucking ass you are. Shut I up. find it very unsettling. That Quiet. move on. Quiet. That moveon.org can get so much support in organizing and having people protest a legitimate election in the United States. Did you notice how many pre-printed signs they had? George Soros is in back of his organization as well as having donated millions of dollars to the Clintons to support his radical ideas for the United States. Well, it's 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 not a matter of acquisition of money. It's it it has to do with power, I think, with these oligarch. Uh, well, I don't know what his ideas of the United States are. Number one. Well, he called okay. himself a god in, in one interview. Well, you know, it's that's of his a bunch of bullshit, you know. But I'm talking about policies. What what the hell does he want for the United States? I don't know, George Soros. Well, He's never running for anything. No, well, from what, I, from, from what I read, it sounds like he he wants to bring the United said, States down. It says down. radical ideas. Bring the United States down. Well, he did work for the Nazi Party. Yeah. 
he had to, his job was to confiscate personal belongings from the Jews before they went to the concentration camps. Nice. Before, before they got on the trains. Nice. A young, a young George Soros. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I think he's said Hungarian. I think I could be wrong. What these protesters are doing is protesting against half the United States citizens who went to the polls and did their vote and their conscience. Also it seems like it is only liberal and progressive people who protest and enact violence. It is sad how many liberal values and political correctness has crept into our schools and colleges. Mm -hmm. Let's give the incoming president the chance before we decide to protest. Let's stop being hyphenated Americans. Let's all become American. Well, the one thing they left out is uh, being all inclusive in, in debates. I think we should see the primary uh, independent candidate as well as a libertarian candidate in the televised debates. It's time for some positive change and to stop the divide. Looking back on this election, we should have seen this coming. On the one hand, there were a group of partisans who supported Donald Trump because he, they believed he would, among other things, build the wall, <laughs> deport all Muslims and illegals, prosecute Hillary Clinton and void all alliances. On the other hand, there were a group of Clinton supporters who agreed with his approach, or her approach, excuse me, on education, investment, international relations, and increasing taxes on the wealthiest Americans. Then there was the group that made the difference. Those who were deciding whether Clinton was telling the truth about what she would do or whether Trump was lying about he, what he would do. And they have spoken about which outcome they think is less of a stretch. begin with. The proof is not in the pudding. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. That is an important distinction and one that editors should preserve. I was watching a talk show during election night when one pundit opined that Donald Trump's election is not the end of the world. Nobody disagreed. And I thought, of course, it may very well be the end of the world. And I was disturbed that no one reacted to that. Trump has said that climate change caused by human activity is a hoax. Perpetrated by China. <laughs> he has promised to undo all of President Obama's environmental policy. Well, is the, uh, is the uh, Arctic ice sheet melting or not? It can only be one of the two. 35 degrees uh, warmer than normal, I, I believe. This, as just about every scientist has warned, could very well have extremely devastating and catastrophic results for the planet. Yeah, to a point of no return. We are already at the tipping point. Where global warming, if not stopped now, would cause rising sea levels, extreme environmental damage to crops, and all living species, in addition to drought, famine, flooding, horrific storms, who knows what else. Hey. Throughout the history of mankind, every great civilization ended up screwing themselves, destroying themselves, and now collectively 
mankind is that coming to the crossroads of possibly destroying the entire planet for some reason this was discussed rarely if at all during the election campaign I don't understand why not but it seems to me that the media in large part responsible for the election results yeah. now have a concomitant responsibility if not an obligation to constantly publicize this drastic and potentially catastrophic situation the media, media is definitely biased has been for quite some time and keep secrets all the time the Democratic National Committee and the 440 plus superdelegates who supported Hillary Clinton before the election season even began are entirely to blame for President-elect Donald Trump. Bernie Sanders would have beaten Trump, but he was cheated out of the nomination and it cost the Democrats everything. And there was no restitution for the foul play against Bernie Sanders. Not even massive protesting. The Bernie Kratz or Bernie Bros, whatever you want to call them, they just simply folded like cheap cameras. They didn't even, they didn't even flock to Jill Stein? Nothing. Because if they did, then Jill Stein would have had a, a trillion people at her rallies. You know? If, if, if life was logical and worked in a sensible way. But it didn't happen. Didn't happen. The American people really do not want positive change bad enough. Yeah. They're not suffering enough. You know, keep well, in mind that Donald Trump has a four year, not a lifetime term. That's true. Hey, let's hope Ellison becomes head of the DNC. That'll be a good thing. Um, no, I already think they made that decision. They picked somebody else? Yeah. They, so they haven't learned their lesson then? No. The DNC has not learned Well, they their picked Nancy to lead them again. Pelosi? Yes. She's good. She's as useless as balls on a pope. No shit. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. They obviously didn't get the message. She didn't do shit back when, when Obama first, in 2008, the first two years of Obama was in and the Democrats had total control. They didn't do shit. She was the majority leader back then, right? Yes. Nothing. All the reforms that people talk about now were never done back then when the Democrats had total control. That's right. In addition, there will be a midterm election. Nothing is permanent. To my liberal friends, do not despair. Most of what President-elect Trump accomplished during these four years can be undone over time, if necessary. I think the Green Party needs to concentrate on building their size and power. There's already a Green Party of New Jersey. Every state should have a Green Party office and because, you know, the Bernie Sanders pipe dream of rescuing the, the, the Democratic Party, it's, it's crap. It ain't gonna happen. You know, Doc, to my conservative friends, most people in this country voted against Trump. You don't have license to run roughshod over the majority of Americans. Conservative friends? Conservative demons? Yeah. Keep their honest desires in mind or you may be in for a surprise in 2020. Uh -huh.
politics as a way of evening things out. As Tip O'Neill once said, all politics is local. So let's dig in locally. Make a difference over the next four years. I thought he said, where's my where's my my other bottle of Irish whiskey? Tip O'Neill. But whatever, let's stop gloating and whining. That is unseemly for people of the greatest democracy in the world. The greatest system in the world is Northern Europe, Scandinavian countries. Scandinavian countries. I am devastated. It is no exaggeration to say that this is the end of the world, or at least of Homo sapiens. Well, if, Sa if Satan's got an end, end of days, end times main office, a, 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 a worldwide headquarters, it would definitely be in Washington, D.C., I would say. That sounds apocalyptic. But it has a basis in fact. It means the end of the climate accord, which already came too late and too little. Now global climate change is rushing in. The glaciers are melting. The oceans are rising. The temperatures are rising. Invasive species are moving north. The mosquito is multiplying and moving north. Right. More viruses too. Even in the short run, the Zika virus is moving north. That's right. More and more babies could be born with microcephaly. But with land masses underwater, You're a there fucking likely will be. What the hell? You're a fucking pain in the ass, Steve the Cat. You are a fucking pain in the ass. He needs a good kick in the ass. There likely will be more hurricanes, more droughts, more floods. I will not go on. I will not experience the worst of it, but my child and my grandchild will. Hey, be born with uh, any defect, they should be aborted early, early stage. It also may be the end of the Iran nuclear accord. So Iran will build a bomb. Can a war, can atomic warfare be far behind? Japan and other countries may be denied the United States nuclear shield. Nuclear bombs will proliferate during the campaign. These matters were not even discussed. And even now I turn on PBS. And what I get is a lot of discussion of why the polls were wrong. Who cares? Well, the polls, it's like a ballpark figure, you know. The polls. There is good news for Bill and Hillary Clinton. Oh, there is? They both can spend more time working for the Clinton Foundation. Oh, God. With no potential conflicts of interest. Unencumbered by pay-to-play laws, they can feel free to give as many $100,000 to $500,000 speeches that they can before any Wall Street or other special group. <sighs> they can build upon their hundred million plus family fortune. Spend more time at the home at their home in Trendy and Chappaqua. Yeah. Chappaqua is that is that Westchester County or is that on Long Island? Westchester. Westchester County. And continue hanging out with Hollywood? and other society elites. There's no need to pretend to be friends of the 99% while living the good life. 
do as I say, not as I do, always has been the Clinton family motto. Doesn't Bill still have that law firm in Hall? Yes, he does. When, it, when he opened but it But I think he was disbarred. Oh, really? From his impeachment. Because when he, uh, when he opened it up, he says, it feels just like home being in Harlem. Yeah. Really? Now, as far as um, end time countdown, um, it is uh, logical to assume that we are, that the white horse of the apocalypse has been riding the false church, the false prophet. Well, that's a long time. A long time. We definitely have our share of them. Uh, it might be uh, ready for possibly the second horse. Uh, what is it? The second seal? Seven seals altogether, right? Well, the horses. The Some horses are four things to come. Yeah. And uh, false religion, of course, is the white horse. The red horse is war. World War Three. Then you have a famine, then right? Then you have famine, pestilence, and uh, something else, man. But those things will come, and there's other things that have to occur along with them. Right. You don't see, you don't see yet the United States of Europe, the Holy Roman Empire, do you? Not yet. Okay. So, until you start seeing that sort of stuff, and what that intends? The great, the great whore, the great whore, the great whore taking over. Yes. That will be what the Roman Catholic Church and the uh, and the uh, United States of Europe, right? The, the Roman Catholic the Church. The Roman Catholic Church has led the Holy Roman Empire on six occasions. Six occasions. Okay. And then we are waiting for the seventh revival. Okay. And the seventh revival is the final revival? The final revival. Reve Le uh, Revelation 17 in your Bible you will read about the Roman Catholic Church and the, the uh, Holy Roman Empire. Now the uh, two Timothy is a description of how people's character will people, be. People will be in the end times. In the end times, yes. And, and just go to 2 Timothy and it's right on the money. It, it describes people today. It describes people. If you had to sum up 2 Timothy in just a few words, I would say pure selfishness uh, with with uh, a sociopathic uh, type of personality and sh not showing remorse, uh, just just pure selfishness. Which which selfishness? You know, greed is part of selfishness. Um, uh, not showing remorse uh, for doing bad things. It's part of selfishness. Uh, if bad things make you money, people today are not going to call them bad, are they? Like Mr. Trump. You're talking about ill-gotten gains? That's correct. They're not going to feel remorse for ill-gotten gains. They're going to say... Exactly, Isn't that a criminal mind? They're going to say exactly what Mr. Trump said when they said, You're not bad at taxes! What did he say? I'm smart. I'm smart. That's why. You you were in you were in the Senate, he said to Hillary Clinton, you were in the Senate. Why didn't you help change the law? I just took advantage of the laws we have as a businessman. Well, he did. He did take advantage of them. But who gave him those advantages? And, and yes, Washington allowed it. There you go. There you go. You know, they do, uh, corporations do what they do because they can. Correct. Absolutely correct. Because they can. They outsource 
they don't pay taxes because they can't. They outsource your jobs because they can. They don't get they don't get their products tariffed when they, when they bring it back to the U.S. because they can. Everything is because they can. And who wrote those laws? They did. The politicians that you elect and and re-elect wrote the laws because the people that you elect took the bribes which is called political corruption, right? Yeah. When you're offered a bribe and you take it. Nothing new. It's it's a standard good, operating procedure. It's an old it's an old procedure in politics. In America, yeah. Politics. And of course, the industrial revolution uh, proves alone that capitalism is the devil's economics. And uh, thanks to Manchester, England, who started the Industrial Revolution, boy, you got you got to salute England for starting all this crap. But then again, England and the United States are Ephraim and Manasseh, right? Modern-day descendants of the cursed two of the cursed tribes of ancient Israel, Ephraim and Manasseh. They they're like. Uh, they're like uh, almost like 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 twins. They, they they're very similar in mentality. You know the the yeah. arrogant, bigoted. Uh, uh, they are uh, modern day Israel. Uh, Israel. Greedy. You know all, all, the, the the way of thinking of the United States and capitalism is very similar to the Bri uh, English monarchy. You know what I mean? The uh, the empire. No, because it's. It's a way of doing business, and it's got its rules and regulations. Yeah, I mean the, so the it's going to be the same. The very concept of buying yeah. low and selling high is unethical. Of course, it's corrupt. When you think about it, we if, saw it in Katrina, did we not? Listen, if this black thorn, thorn good luck shillelagh from Excuse Ireland, me. cost the Irish, the guy in Ireland, let's say, to make, uh, let's say it cost them five U.S. dollars. Uh -huh. And let's say, hypothetically, he tried to sell them on an infomercial for thirty dollars. Well, that's a that's a pretty huge markup, isn't it? They're pretty big. Uh -huh. Thirty or fifty. Let's say fifty bucks. All right, that's hey. highway robbery. Now he gets away with it, right? Because capitalist system. If you're in business, you're allowed to screw your 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 consumers. Yeah, you put a price on it that you can get away with. Yeah. Now, now the whole idea. You don't have a competitor. How do you know you can get away with anything? Right. Now, now, the, now, besides buying low and selling high, the whole concept of the suggested retail selling price is is like a game too. Is unethical also because what is the suggested retail selling price? How do you 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 do you use any any science to determining? The suggested no. retail selling price? No, usually it's it, it, it's uh, it's the cost of production plus a little profit. A little, a fair profit. Fair profit. Now, if you're gouging, no if fair you're, profit. If you're involved in price gouging as an industry, well, there's no fair profit. You're going to make a lot more money, aren't you? Yeah, you, you, it's called ripping people off. It's called fucking your fucking over your consumers, uh -huh. and the system allows it. All right. Anyway, we're done. Right? Okay. Yeah. We're, we're sure. done. Ag agreed. Yeah. All right. We'll see you next time on Progressive Discussions. Have a good one. <laughs> Remember, happy Festivus for the rest of us, and Merry Krampus. I like Krampus. He's 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 a German uh, demon-like creature that kidnaps bad children and tortures them, and, and they end up getting a lump of coal in their in their stocking. Wouldn't it be funny if they got dirty socks in their stocking, and then inside the dirty no. socks were more dirty socks? What if their socks had a hole in it and the coal fell out? No, I think I think real putrid, smelly bo socks Ooh. inside of their socks. Stocking is a is a, is better gift than coal. Yikes. You know, then you just stuff the the you stuff the the spoiled monster's face in the dirty, smelly sucks. That's cool, man. Please.